Okay guys, we're in the car, we're on the way to Melbourne and uh, I thought I'd do a quick video to show all of the different destination charges. So we're gonna have a look at all the different destination charges and the uh, economies on the way or the consumptions. Okay, so we're in Richmond, Victoria. Total eight hours or 737 kilometers. We did stop in overnight in Ballarat just for the kids because it's too much driving for them otherwise. So when we left Adelaide, I was already averaging uh, 143 watts per kilometer. Then at the first stop here in Tail and Bend, you can see we're at 194 watts per kilometer. So this first leg of the trip, although not necessarily faster on the freeway, was uphill with 500 meters of incline. So what I've found in the past is that this is the worst part of the efficiency. Driving this thing up a steep hill is always the worst efficiency than the freeway, or at least that's what I found in the past. So when we left, we had 432 kilometers on the taco and getting into Tail and Bend, we have 268 kilometers. So we've used 170 odd kilometers between Brighton, South Australia and Tail and Bend, South Australia. Okay, Tail and Bend, we have six charges. Just finished charging. We're at an OTR, BP, combined with, I think, like a block in the box. Plus a hungry jacks. I don't think you can hear any of this. Okay, so moving on from there, we went to Keith. Mind you, we don't need all these charges. We're charging because I figure I'd rather have too much power than not enough. And in this scenario where we keep getting random blackouts throughout Australia, you know, power down or whatever the scenario is, I thought it'd be an absolute joke to get to a town and not have enough power. So let's just keep topping up every time. So on average, we stopped about every two hours, which turned out to be absolutely perfect for the kids. So again, leaving Tail and Bend, we're at 432 kilometers, fully charged, and we get into Keith at 253 kilometers left. This is an average of 181 watts per kilometer. Now, this was, I thought, a little bit high. And interestingly enough, I met another Tesla driver called Lee. He had a Model 3 and I compared our stats. He was going the opposite direction. So he was coming home from Melbourne where I was on my way to Melbourne. His average consumption was 153 watts in his Model 3. Uh, and I was curious if this was a Model 3 Model Y thing as a Model Y is wider, but it turned out the Model Y pretty much matched that on the next leg. Okay, we're here in Keith. We've got three destination chargers and one that is a side-on trailer charger, which is pretty cool. As for places to go, there's not a whole lot. I think there's toilet black block back there. Hello, family. And then we've just got mechanics and housing. Not a whole lot to do here, but there is a playground about 500 meters down the road. Okay, so we leave Keith again, fully charged, 132 odd kilometers, something around there, and we get into Horsham. We get into Horsham with 159 kilometers left, and we average 189 watts per kilometer. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we did match the Model 3 on that specific part of the route. For the first 50 kilometers of that, we were around that 153 watts per kilometer. But then when we got closer into Horsham, we obviously started driving, doing some different types of driving, different speeds and different hills, and it ended up coming back up to about 189 watts per kilometer. Okay, we're in Horsham. They've got three chargers, but they are all, I don't even know the technical name for these, that charger. So if you got a Model S, you can't charge it. I should say if you've got an old Model S or even an early Model 3, you can't charge it. But it is at a tire repair shop and it's got shopping center. So it's in a good location. Okay, so getting into Ballarat, this is where we stayed the night. Now we left again with 432 odd kilometers on the range. Now we got into Ballarat last night to stay the night and I believe we got in with about 98 kilometers worth of range left. By the time I got to the car in the morning, it was down to 72 kilometers worth of range. This is just something that happens when you leave your sentry on, you chew through a bit of power overnight, and if that annoys you, you can obviously turn it off. For me, I'd rather have the sentry on, so if someone hits my car or something happens, it's all recorded. So going to charge in Ballarat, coming from Horsham, we get there with 72 kilometers worth of range, and we used an average of 208 watts per kilometer. Now, it's worth mentioning here, you can see this last bit of driving, which is just through the town. That was by far the worst part of our drive, the most, the least efficient was just me zooming around town, constant accelerating and braking and accelerating and braking. So that's interesting in itself. Okay, we are here in Ballarat. There are six different chargers, both with the two different types of heads on them. Decent shopping center behind me with super cheap auto and all the rest of that. And there's a decent shopping center across the road with cafes, Coles and 
Wickland, something like that. Okay, so we arrived at Tesla Richmond today. It wasn't really intentional to land out of Tesla, but it was just the closest one to our hotel. And we got here with 307 kilometers of range left after leaving Ballarat. Okay, so for the answers, how far did we travel? We traveled 737 kilometers. On average, we were 178 watts per kilometer. That was average across everything across the trip. The most efficient we were was actually coming into Melbourne. I suspect purely because we were doing 80 kilometers an hour, to put it bluntly. I think it was just that much more efficient at 80 kilometers an hour driving constantly. We have I don't know, four superchargers here. At a guess, two of them get mostly used by Tesla. We've plugged in on the end here and uh, I'll hop back in the car, we'll go through the data. Okay, I know you guys are super curious. How much did it cost us to drive a Tesla from Adelaide to Melbourne using nothing but superchargers? And the answer is, it's probably not as cheap as you thought. It was $96.36. Now, keep in mind, this is purely supercharging. So this is some of the most expensive charging you can do. You know, charging at home, charging through your solar, your Tesla can be in an amazingly efficient and, and eco car. Charging like this is obviously a lot less efficient. $96. Let's do some math on how much it would cost to get a standard car here. So if I was driving a standard car, I'd be assuming I'm going to get around 12 litres per 100. 12 litres per 100 kilometres, right? So let's divide that 737 kilometre distance divided by 100 kilometres. If we say we get an efficiency of a standard car around 12 litres per 100, we're going to say 7.37 times 12. That's 88.44 litres times ballpark $2 a litre. It's $176. So there you go. We are still 50% cheaper even doing it through all the supercharging and everything else, we are still roughly 50% cheaper than driving a petrol car. The massive benefit here with the Tesla is this car just about drives itself. The input to the steering wheel is so minimal. It holds the speed, it holds the lane. All that you have to do is make sure that it recognizes you're holding the steering wheel every couple of minutes and it makes the driving just so much more stress-free. I took over obviously every time I wanted to overtake or get past a truck or anything like that. And for that, the Tesla has tons of power. But for the most part, I just left it in cruise control or auto drive or whatever the hell you want to call it. The only time I actually took over was in the Melbourne toll roads because they're so crazy. You've got a semi-trailer on the left of you, a semi-trailer on the right of you. And I just didn't feel like becoming the meat in the sandwich. Okay, guys, so I can confirm it is 100% doable to go from South Australia to Melbourne using a Tesla. Now, we stopped off at every single stop we could, every two hours roughly, because I thought, you know what, better to be safe than sorry. But you could definitely get there in a lot less stops than what I did. You could actually get to Melbourne in probably three stops. For the most part, the stops are perfect. They're like two hours apart. You get out, stretch your legs 15 minutes, your car's full, you keep going again. And since we ended up in Tesla Richmond here, it would be rude not to go in and check it out. These guys have an amazing showroom with this beautiful blue Model 3 on display, this beautiful red Model Y on display, and they've got an absolutely gorgeous showroom here. And even out the back, you can see their delivery center is just, it's really nice. Okay, guys, well, in this next video, I'm going to be doing the Great Ocean Road, which is going to be a whole other type of journey because there aren't superchargers every two hours. I don't actually know what to expect, but I figure we'll be okay because we're in no rush. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in this type of content.